Hey everybody, it's Christina Holloway here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about five outdated career tips that you should ignore in 2023 if you want to build a successful career trajectory for yourself. It's the end of 2022 and this means that you may be asking yourself what career success will look like for you in the new year. And you probably just want to start strong in January. If that's the case, then you definitely want to ignore some of these damaging career tips. Don't worry, I have you covered with better advice. Real quick, if you enjoy this content and you want to learn more about how to succeed in your career, make sure to follow my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video from me. All right, so let's get started. Number one, always say yes and never ask for more. Okay, so this one is a difficult habit to break. It's the same as telling someone to be happy for what they have and don't rock the boat. Sure. There are people out there who are risk averse and they see everything that comes their way as just good enough. But in terms of career advice, that's going to work against you. If you're interested in building your experiences, collecting wins to get ahead and developing skills to take on bigger responsibilities then sitting around waiting for someone to happen to give you opportunities is not going to work for you. I'm just gonna give you a healthy reminder here. It is okay to ask for what you want it's also okay to ask for more, and it's especially okay to say no to requests on your time. The best way to say no is to engage in conversation. Can you take on this project? No, but tell me more. Are you sure you can't take on this extra project? Yes, I'm sure, but if it's important, I'll have to rearrange my other projects. Which one should I defer? What does this do? It helps you create boundaries while allowing you to get used to saying no. Because for many of us, we've been told to take assignments and just do them. We're under the assumption that the work we're going to do is going to lead us somewhere. That's fine. It should. But you should also know that you need to be engaged in this process. That means you get to ask for what you want and you get to set boundaries around requests that set you up for overwhelm or exhaustion. Does that mean it works every time? No, it does not. Also, you're setting yourself up as a difficult person if you constantly say no to work you just don't like to do. That's not what this is about, and that's definitely going to work against you. Number two, work on your strengths and your weaknesses. When I was working full time, I'd go into performance reviews with my boss, and we'd have a conversation around my raise and about my performance. She'd walk through things I did right, and then she'd tell me that if I wanted to continue on my career development path, that I should work on some weaknesses that she had identified. And I bought into it. I'd sign up for training or I'd take some virtual classes and read some books. And then I'd work really hard in areas that were very uncomfortable for me. And of course, in hindsight, I'd say I didn't have marked improvement in these areas. They are weaknesses for a reason. And where do we see this the most? telling introverts that they have to speak up more in meetings if they want to be successful in their careers. No. The philosophy these days on strong leadership is that you'll gravitate toward what comes naturally to you. And my coaching process is really more about asking the individual where they feel most comfortable at work, the environment, the interactions, the people, and why. Once they tap into what helps them find fulfillment, engagement, and productivity, we work on using that specific formula to create more success. My take is that it isn't about working on your strengths and your weaknesses. It's about working on your strengths and redefining your weaknesses. Number three, true leadership is strong and forceful. No, it is not. True leadership is about finding what works best for you and your natural personality in, and leaning into what comes naturally to create a space for respect and open dialogue with your colleagues. Once you can do that, you'll be able to create a culture where people want to work with you. I will also say, people who think they need to be forceful, hard driving, micromanaging, and overbearing are only able to see short-term results from those efforts. They will run into high turnover and burnout from their team members, not to mention mediocre results. Real leadership comes from understanding who works for you and meeting them where they need the best inspiration and support. That's how you create high performance teams. In addition, 
Leadership style is important. I often talk about figuring out what your primary and secondary style looks like, and I love the article, The Eight Archetypes of Leadership by Manfred F. R. Ketz DeVries, which I will link down below. Once you can identify where you are a natural leader, you'll know where you can best contribute as a leader. Number four, avoid resume gaps. Look, resume gaps will happen. You could end up needing to take time off for any number of reasons. What's important is that you're able to answer questions towards them. Did you take a year off to travel? Terrific. Were you between jobs for an extended period of time? Okay. It's the follow-up question that's relevant. What did you do or learn during this gap? In taking a year off to travel through Europe and Asia, I realized that different cultures and different perspectives lead to creative problem solving. My travels allowed me to find a richer, deeper perspective on the nuances of culture as it relates to organizational development. I found that my experiences have allowed me to see strategic growth in a nuanced way. Whatever. Answer the question as it relates to what you've learned through the experience and apply it to the job you're trying to land. In the past, it felt to me that resume gaps were a good way of telling someone, mostly women, that they had not been developing their skills and their contributions would be outdated. That taking a break, maybe to have a baby or care for an ailing parent, meant that your skills were rusty. I still have that conversation today. I work with a large tech company that gives women at least six months off work after childbirth, and every woman I speak with, every woman, tells me she does not want to take that much time off work for fear that she'll be behind or won't get considered for a promotion. That if you don't have visibility, you don't have a career path forward. Let's try really hard to push back on that narrative. I often tell my clients that their careers are going to last 20, 30, or 40 years. Taking six months off work to have a baby is a really small amount of time. This is an old, outdated perspective, and I'm glad to see bigger companies giving people the opportunity to take time off without consequence. Many companies these days offer sabbatical time off, family time to care for family members, extended maternity leave, and personal health care. All of this matters. And going forward, I think it's going to be extremely important for companies and corporate cultures to understand that gaps in work can actually help with employee engagement and retention. This is definitely a narrative that we need to unlearn. Number five, job hopping is bad for your career. First of all, no, it's not. Second of all, here's how I know. The first few years out of college, I bounced around a few jobs. Some were just bad jobs, bad bosses, and bad responsibilities. Other jobs were good jobs, but the timing wasn't right. I was working temp to hire and the position just didn't materialize. And when I did a job interview for a really great position that I really wanted, I asked the hiring manager why they wanted to talk to me and he said, I quote, we're looking for people with more diverse experience and backgrounds. Yours popped up as a good candidate. I also got the job. You have no idea what people are looking for when they take a chance and interview you. There is something in your resume that stands out to them. Take a minute, if you can, to ask what they saw in you that would be valuable to them, or their team, or the position specifically. You might be surprised to find that something you took for granted on your resume, or something you thought was a liability, turns out to be very valuable. Also, these are trying times. People are being laid off, and there's talk of a recession on the horizon. How that plays out, we don't know yet. But I will say that I've had to look for work more than once during a recession. It is possible. You do have to be creative, and you could end up with something surprising and fulfilling. For anyone to tell you during uncertain times that you moving around will work against you is being disingenuous. All right, so that's it for my video on the five outdated career tips you should avoid in 2023. Let me know down below in the comments if you've ever been given any of these outdated career tips as advice what happened. Feel free to share your experiences. I'd love to hear about them. And if you enjoyed watching this video and you found it helpful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up by hitting that like button. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss another video from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the new year. Bye!